Lionel Wendt, who is he? Photographer, pianist, critic, patron, mentor, trailblazer, activist, maverick. This short documentary can't give a complete answer to that question. In order to do that, we must free him from tradition, conservatism, expediency, idealism, the colonial era, art politics and the middle class. Wendt was essentially a private person, not isolated but accessible, significantly marked out from his fellows by his artistic work, yet during some part of his life earning a living like most other people. Characteristic of him was a serious artist's concentration on his medium. He was one of a minority in a minority, that of the English-speaking, who born and bred in a small tropical island, could move easily and freely in the literary and artistic traditions of Europe. Yet he did not, and could not, feel himself alienated from the culture of the country to which he belonged. His father, Henry Lawrence Wendt, was a Supreme Court judge and legislative counsellor and was a founder of the Amateur Photographic Society of Ceylon in 1906. Wendt's mother was an enthusiastic social worker and organized frequent concerts in aid of charities. Soon she discovered that her son's genius lay in this direction. I believe that somewhere in the darkest night... In 1919, Lionel went to England to study law at the Inner Temple. He joined the Royal Academy of Music and trained under Oscar Berenger and the master pianist Mark Hamburg. The young Lionel must have been piercingly influenced by the modernist art movements in Europe, by Surrealism and by the avant-garde. Man Ray, the quintessential surrealist photo artist was a huge influence on his later photographic work. Lionel Wendt grew to adulthood through an era of great social and political turbulence and transition. In Europe, it was the First World War, the Russian Revolution, the Great Economic Depression of the 30s, as well as the breakout of the Second World War and mass anti-imperialist struggles in the Indian subcontinent. In Ceylon, it was a late colonial period, a period of economic boom, cultural nationalism, social upheaval, encroaching military rule, and the emergence of the new middle class. A special relationship developed between Lionel Wendt and George Keat from a very early age. Two men born into the inhibiting values and tepid purlieus of an anglicized Victorian society at the height of British imperial rule, who were able to discover with delight and understanding the civilized underpinnings and deeper sophistications of a traditional culture and an Eastern way of life they grew to appreciate and depict. Lionel Wendt came back to Ceylon in 1924. The two decades that followed were convulsive times for the island and for the Indian subcontinent. In 1925, his recital of Debussy, Ravel, Polenche, Albanese, Granados, De Faya, and several modern English composers, when he also accompanied soprano Mrs. Stanley de Serum, led one reviewer to proclaim he has made history, musically, so far as Colombo is concerned. 
Mr. Went had never played so well with such extreme command and musical understanding. What strikes one most in his playing is the same quality which made for the choice and arrangement of his program. A musician's grasp of the compositions as music and not a virtuoso exploitation of them. It was not unusual to come upon him in some crowded place, squinting into a viewfinder, wide-brimmed hat thrust back, glasses pushed up on a profusely sweating forehead and having to be constantly wiped. Somehow a characteristic gesture, quite unmindful of curious passers-by. Montage, paste-ups, reversals, paper negatives, bromichings, transparencies in monochrome and in color made a seemingly endless stream of work recording the life around him or the feelings within. And that it stopped abruptly, instead of petering out like an aging prima donna, was just what he would have wished. The increasing tide of proletarian and peasant agitation intensified and solidified in their political character and militancy. The economic downturn and depression caused food shortages, rural famine and a malaria epidemic. The best of Wen's photographs demonstrate how human sensitiveness to the natural scene, to patterns of light and shade, to what the imagination focuses on behind the visual reality does transform sensible matter into works of art. In 1934, Wendt teamed up with the British documentary filmmaker Basil Wright for a documentary project. The result was Song of Ceylon, a landmark in documentary film history. Wendt narrated the film, but more than that, Basil Wright always described him as the mentor, the guiding force behind the film. Natural resources. Copra. The market was steady at yesterday's higher prices. Salon FMS November to five ports quoted ten pounds seven shillings and Hello? Seven, fellow CIS. Speaking. Oh, Gregson here. The butler's blueprints for the new factory. So oh, yes. As a matter of fact, I was just going to send them along. There are one or two alterations I want you to look over. All right, I'll go as soon as I get them. We're in rather a hurry, you know. Yes, of course, I understand that. You must realize... Embola Valley, 42.6, East Endurance Salon, 23. Ditto, 6%, Preference, 28 and 6. Neuralia, 83, 1 and a half. Yeti and Tot, 16, 4 and a half, 7 and a half, 6 and a half. Carolina, 1, 7, 8. The Second World War. Economic pressure and military defeat suffered by the Allied powers the strategic and economic importance of Ceylon, conversion from a legislative-based colonial administration to a de facto military authority and the imposition of martial law. The anti-imperialist militant mass struggles for national independence waged in India by the Congress Party and in Sri Lanka by the left parties. On 29th August 1943, Lionel Wendt, George Classen, Aubrey Collette, Richard Gabriel, Harry Pérez, Lester James Pérez and Ivan Pérez met at Wendt's house at number 18 Guildford Crescent. They made a resolution to form the 43 group. Some critics say it was the brainchild of Ivan Pérez. Harry Pérez is widely endorsed as the real backbone of the group. Lionel Wendt, himself neither a painter nor a sculptor, was the most influential force behind the formation of the 43 group. The eternal qualities of art, as shown at Anuradhapura and Polo Narua, should be studied, adapted to our life, and a continuity with them achieved. This continuity is closer to the decorative conceptions of modern art than to the realistic, true-to-life prettiness and cheap harmonies of academic achievement. Wendt suffered a sudden heart attack and died on December 19, 1944.
Alborada, the house he built and lived in from the late 20s, was demolished in 1950 to make way for the first stage of the memorial complex. The memorial theatre was opened in 1953 and the Lionel Went Memorial Art Gallery in May 1959. Today, Wendt poses himself to us as a question. A question that engulfs tradition, modernity, politics and the self, and our present achievements and dilemmas in culture and the arts. 